Welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the recording of presentations that were conducted on March 11th, 2019 as part of the first Kearns Growers meeting that was held in St. Paul, Minnesota. My name is Jake Youngers and I'm faculty in the Department of Agronomy and Plant Genetics here at the University of Minnesota. This series of recordings is split into three different presentations. The first is an introduction, which is what you're listening to now. The second recording covers basic agronomics of currents of production. And the third recording focuses on advanced agronomics for currents of production. At today's meeting, you're going to hear about our research around the agronomy of currents of production our efforts to measure the environmental impacts, and also our work to implement this new crop across the landscape of the upper Midwest. But Kernza is really one of about 13 new crops that are being developed under the Forever Green Initiative. The Forever Green Initiative is unique because it covers all aspects of new crop development, including breeding and genetics, of course, the agronomy, the environmental impacts, food science, understanding the chemistry of these new potential food ingredients, as well as commercialization to make sure that these new crops and the products they provide can be produced economically for growers and for end users. But again, today we're going to focus on agronomy, uh, implementation, and a little bit on the environmental impacts. Regarding agronomics, the first presentation on the basics of currents of production is going to cover establishment, fertility, weed management, harvest challenges, yield longevity, and then new ways to ensure economic viability. Some of our research is also looking at how we can use Kernza as a new system to adapt to changing climates. We won't have time to discuss that today, but know that it is something that we're working on uh, and that we will be looking to get feedback from growers on this topic in the near future. During this introduction presentation, I'm going to give you a real quick overview of some of our work to measure the environmental impacts of this new perennial grain crop. I'll talk about some of our research that's focused on carbon sequestration, some of it that's also focused on conserving topsoil and preventing soil erosion. We also want to make sure that this system retains nutrients and that those nutrients are not lost to surface waters and to groundwater. Kernza is also a crop that could enhance biodiversity. Implementation is also an important aspect of our program. One way to help encourage implementation of a new crop like Kernza is to use crop simulation modeling. And I'll mention some of our work on that topic. We also are developing tools to help growers decide when and where to plant these new crops like Kernza within their system. We're developing a number of extension programs and are hosting outreach events across the state of Minnesota focused on Kernza and Kernza production. Now I'm going to give you a snapshot of some of the agronomic research trials and where they're being conducted across the state of Minnesota. Some of our experiments are conducted right here in St. Paul on campus. We have a rotation study, a legume intercropping study, and an experiment that looks at how kerns or roots are affected by plant density and how those interactions lead to changes in grain yield with stand age. 
We also do a lot of work in Rosemount, Minnesota at the Minnesota Agricultural Experiment Station at that location. So this is a list of the various trials being conducted at Rosemount. We utilize other research sites in the network of experiment stations um, that is owned and operated by the University of Minnesota, including a variety trial at Wasika and Lamberton. University of Minnesota Morris is another location where we conduct current research, and that is actually where most of our grazing research takes place. We partner with Central Lakes College to conduct experiments uh, largely related to water quality in the sandy soils near Staples, Minnesota. We also have on-farm trials in Southwest Minnesota uh, on land owned by Lincoln Pipestone Rural Water. And this is again another water quality study, as well as land owned by the city of Chatfield. We have a new study that will be implemented in the fall of 2019 in partnership with various stakeholder groups and entities in the Cold Spring St. Cloud region. And we have additional on-farm trials at Madison, Minnesota, in Roseau, War Road region, and in Anoka County. Now I'm gonna highlight a few studies that you might not see results from during today's presentations uh, but i want to highlight these so that you know that they're ongoing and this is work that's being conducted around kernza so the first is a rotation trial we're looking to see how kernza can perform as a cropping system during the transitional phase from conventional production to organic that transitional phase requires three years of production without any synthetic uh, fertilizer or pesticides. And Kernza is a good candidate for a crop to be produced during those that three-year period. And we're going to compare productivity of Kernza grown as a monoculture. Uh, in combination with alfalfa as an intercropping system and compare these perennial crops to various rotations of summer and winter annuals. And these rotations include wheat, red clover, soybean, corn, and various cover crop mixtures, including winter rye and hairy vetch. Another component of this research is to look at the carbon budget of these various transitional systems. There are a lot of elements of the carbon budget that we're going to be monitoring, including carbon accumulation into above ground biomass and below ground biomass, the amount of carbon being removed from the system during crop harvest, we're going to take an in-depth look at carbon cycling from plants to microbes to soil and then measure the quantity of carbon in different pools below the soil surface. We'll also be taking a close look at greenhouse gas emissions, including carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. This is the topic that companies like General Mills are very interested in. And General Mills has uh, provided important funding to measure and quantify the greenhouse gas budget of Kernza and other cropping systems. Water quality is another important environmental impact and it's a uh, one that Kernza has the potential to improve in Minnesota. The map of Minnesota you see here, uh, the red dots on this map indicate wells that had nitrate levels that exceeded the safe drinking limit set by the EPA. The small dots are 
private drinking wells and the large dots are public water supplies. So you can see that there are a number of water supplies that are, have nitrate levels that exceed that safe drinking limit. And what we're doing with Kernza is planting this crop in wellhead protection areas around these contaminated wells to see if we can reduce the amount of nitrate being leached into that source water area. One of the sites includes the Lincoln Pipestone Rural Water Supply Region near the Verdi well field. And in 2017, we planted 54 acres of Kernza at this location. A second location as part of the same project is Chatfield. The water quality issues are a little bit different there. Um, they're facing challenges due to the karst geology of that region, but uh, they are still facing similar problems with nitrate levels exceeding safe drinking limits. We have 13 acres planted in and around the city of Chatfield within the wellhead protection area of that region. This project includes various stakeholders, uh, including folks who are interested in developing the supply chains for Kernza commercialization. F to commercialize Kernza, we need to identify partners who can dry the grain, clean and condition it, test the grain to ensure quality standards. The grain needs to be dehulled before milling and then transported and stored so that it can be used as a high quality food ingredient. These activities are part of a LCCMR project that started in 2018. And as I mentioned, there are a number of stakeholder partners involved with this project, uh, which is being led by the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Partners include the city of Chatfield, the Lincoln Pipestone Rural Water, the Agricultural Utilization Research Institute, Minnesota Rural Water Association, and Greenland's Blue Waters. And together, we are monitoring water quality beneath these large scale Kernza research and demonstration plots, as well as hosting field days across Minnesota to highlight the importance of this issue and how Kernza can be a potential solution to this issue. A similar project is going to take place starting fall of 2019 in the Stearns County um, Cold Spring watershed region. The project will be similar to the 2018 LCCMR project in that we will have both large scale demonstration fields of Kernza as well as small scale research experiments uh, being operated in tandem. And the 2019 project includes various stakeholder partners, such as Stearns County Soil Water Conservation District, St. Cloud Public Services, Cold Spring Brewery, and Minnesota Native Landscapes. These two projects have been rather successful so far in that they have brought together these diverse stakeholder groups to support this private public partnership to use new crops to protect drinking water. The state of Minnesota has observed the progress of these projects and determined that these projects might be good models for a broader statewide initiative to address the problem of nitrate leaching in drinking water. Currently, there is a bill being heard in the Minnesota legislature to help financially support the production of Kernza and other 
perennial crops in wellhead protection areas. And this is the type of social infrastructure that is required to help build these new crop enterprises to optimize the production of agricultural products and ecosystem services. So social infrastructure includes technical assistance. Uh, we are also developing a Kearns of Growers Network as part of a USDA SARE grant. Today we will be distributing the first Kearns of Growers Guide and the Forever Green Initiative has recently been working with the Walton Family Foundation to develop a team here at the University of Minnesota to help build the supply chains and provide marketing and support for Kernza and other new forever green crops. That concludes the introduction to Kernza and the topics that are going to be discussed today at the meeting. Uh, the next uh, set of slides and the next presentation will cover the basics of Kernza agronomics and production.